So we talk a lot in Glide Education about structuring your data. And for the sake of this video, I wanna break that down into three areas. You've obviously got the basic data. This is the raw data that makes up the information in your tables. And then you've got pretty much all computed AI and integration columns. Computer columns and AI columns and integration columns nearly always bring back a single value or multiple values in an array. For example, even if you're bringing back, say, an entire work of Shakespeare into a single cell, then that's just considered a single value. Or you might be bringing back multiple numbers in an array, like a comma separated list. But two of the columns or the column types in the computed columns area do something different. And that's the query column and the relation column. These don't bring back values. They bring back entire records from tables in your project. For example, say you had an employees table and a locations table, and you wanted to link employees to locations so that on the locations table, you could pull in all the employees and then maybe pull in all of their salaries and then total all of their salaries and things like that. Or maybe in a sales app, you have an orders table and then you have a sales reps table and you want to see how many uh, sales someone made in a particular quarter or total their sales or find the, the biggest sale that was made in Q4, for example. All of these are gonna require you to pull in information from another table to the current table so that you can perform operations on it or simply just show that in the layout editor. Now, these two columns, the query and the relation column have significant overlap. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the differences between them and when to use them. So relations and query columns both bring back rows, but a relation column only uses one criteria to bring back those rows, and a query column can use multiple criteria. For example, here we have warehouse locations, and what we're doing here in this relation column is we're saying, find items with the value, this name here, in the users table. So in the users table, we have uh, each sales rep has a warehouse, and then bring back all the people that have that match so that we can see that we have three people for Orlando that are brought back here. And indeed we have three people with Orlando in this column and those people are brought back. But a query column is slightly different. We say, bring in all of the data from this source and critically the source can be a table. It can actually be a relation or indeed another query. And then we can filter it in different ways with and or conditions. And we can then sort by a certain way or limit it. So here we're saying, bring in all of the, the items from the orders table where the uh, warehouse is the current warehouse. So here this is only orders from the Orlando warehouse and the date and time is after today. And then sort by quantity. So we can see that the uh, order here is the first one is 30, second one is 22 and the third one is 19. And then critically we say limit to three, we could limit to two or one. And this is particularly useful if we're then showing this in our app because we don't have to necessarily deal with the filtering and sorting in the layout editor on a collection. And also this might be relevant to further, com further computations and rollups that we do on this set of rows. So that's the basics. So in summary, relation columns are for when you want to match records with a single value and query columns are where you want to match records on multiple criteria, not just values, and also optionally use sorting and limiting. So you might be thinking that if the relation column and the query column are the same, but the query column is just more powerful and flexible, why can't I just use the query column for everything? Well, if you're working in SQL data sources or queryable data sources, in other words, big tables or anything in this folder here, then that's absolutely right. You should just use the query column for pretty much everything. But if you're in a non-SQL data source like Glide Tables, Google Sheets, Airtable, etc., then relations might actually be more performant. So here's an example. Here we're bringing in all the sales reps by matching the name of the warehouse with the warehouse in the users table. Um, and then we've, re we've kind of created that again in the query column, but we're getting this alert saying this query will be faster as a relation. And this is due to the fact that the query column is having to do a little bit more work than the relation column because it has these options like sort and filter and limit just running in the background to put it very simply. So if you're in a non-SQL data source and you only need to match by one criteria, so for example here we're only using one criteria, then you should use a relation as it'll be a lot quicker. So you can drop from this video right now if you understand everything. I'm gonna do a deep dive now into something that might be of interest to you if you're interested in going into this a little bit further.
So to recap one last time, the relation column brings in one or multiple rows based on one criteria, match this with this, whereas the query column brings in multiple rows and then you can use multiple criteria to filter that back with filters. And then of course, sorting and limiting. Before we had the query column, if we wanted to filter the results of a relation, we had to use multiple columns and we call this conditional relations. Now, while you don't need to do this anymore, it might be something that's interesting for you because there are after all multiple ways of building things and it might give you a deeper appreciation for how all of this kind of structuring of your data works when it comes to bringing back rows. So let's imagine that we're running an agency dealing with house rentals, right? We have rental units and then we have leases. Some of the leases are active and some of them are not active. And we have this if then else column here, which basically outputs the rental unit key if it is active. So for example here, here's a lease by someone called Beatrice and we've got her unit, uh, the, the, the rental unit that it's relating to in here. And then in this column, we only see that rental unit ID again if it's active, right? So what we do then in the actual rental units is we create a relation column where we relate the rental unit ID to the if then else column that we created there. So basically we're only gonna create a relation if there's a value in this column, which is based on whether or not this is active. So you can see this actually involves uh, an extra column <laughs> in the mix. Whereas you can of course do this with a query. So here I can just do this. I can say pull in all leases where the rental unit is this one. So that's basically the relation type of stuff here. In fact, if I delete this, we're gonna get that, that alert again because we're just recreating a basic relation. But then we filter where the active is uh, checked. And that is basically recreating what we did here. But of course the power with the query column is that you can then do other things like the price is over 7,000, sort by price, limit by top two, things like that. And then on that, all of your further computations and conditions can then rest. So the query column for this kind of complex setup or anything more complex is much, much more suitable. But hopefully that was interesting to you to understand how we used to do it and how you might want to create your own conditional relations.